Water baptism is not New Testament. You don't need water baptism to be saved. Salvation is faith in Christ. Christ alone. A person can be saved and not be physically baptized. The thief on the cross who was assured eternal life didn't have the chance to go through baptism and yet was promised life. Ebel Damina, when I finish, go back and study the Bible. This thing is not for quarreling. Don't quarrel with me. Don't tear your shirt. Just take your own Bible and do exegesis and show water baptism as a doctrine of the New Testament. There is one pastor by the name of Abel Damina. I watched your video this morning where you are saying that there is no more water baptism in the church. John chapter 1 verse 29. That, that is Abel Damina. John chapter 1 verse 29. That is the pastor. Next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him. John is the father of baptism. Okay, so that's why we are starting with the father, the founder, the originator. Of water baptism, the John, oh, that John, oh, oh not this John, that John. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> that John is the founder of water baptism. So the next day, John, the founder of water baptism, see Jesus coming unto him and saith, "Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world." Next verse. <coughs> this is He. Of whom I said, after me, John the baptizer, cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. Next verse. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest. Please take note of that. But that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. That is the purpose of water baptism is to announce Jesus to Israel. This is John himself talking. Next verse, next verse, next verse. And John bore record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. Next verse. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. Next verse. And I saw him and bore record that this is the Son of God. So John has given you the purpose of water baptism is to announce Jesus. Then John the Baptist himself said, I indeed baptize with water, but the mightier than I will not use water. He will baptize with the Holy Ghost. So today, who is baptizing you? Is it John or Jesus? If it is Jesus, Jesus doesn't use water. Jesus uses Holy Ghost. If it is John, John uses water. So what is water? Water, water is symbolic of the Spirit. You didn't hear that. Water is symbolic of the spirit how do i prove that john chapter 7 verse 38 the same john john chapter 7 verse 38 he that believeth on me as the scripture had said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water next verse but this take he of the spirit the water is symbolic of the spirit which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So since the Holy Ghost had not come, they used water. But the moment the Holy Ghost came, water expired. But he did not read another scripture in John chapter 3, verse 5. He deliberately did not read John. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, 
water and of the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god that place not talking about water baptism it's not like going to the river and soaking in water no i told you in the beginning water is symbolic did i say so so met water there is a metaphor water there is figurative because some people associate that got to be with water as you have to be baptized and that is the last thing that nicodemus would have thought of now jesus expected him to know the old testament after all he is a pharisee he's teaching the old testament all right so he thought that he would know this upside and down and let me give you two illustrations why this does not apply to baptism with water okay because in the old testament it's never associated that way water is associated with god doing something in a human heart i'll give you two examples okay one is in ezekiel chapter 36 and the verses are 25 and 26 god says hey i will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean i will cleanse you from all your impurities from all your idols moreover i will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you and i will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh let me give you another one that's jeremiah chapter 33 verse 8. god says i will cleanse them from all the iniquity they have committed against me and forgive all the wrong that they have committed by rebelling against me so here god says i will cleanse you i will change your heart and that's what jesus was expecting nicodemus to get out of these words and john to anyone who's listening who depends upon baptism to be saved their faith is spurious it is a wrong faith and it is not the faith that is necessary to get into heaven right now let me be very clear obviously nicodemus would have thought of those verses that's correct he would not have thought of baptism and furthermore jesus says he's not talking about two births he doesn't say unless you're born of water and born of the spirit that's right he's talking about one birth where there is water and spirit the cleansing of the spirit and the transforming work of the Holy Spirit. In fact, John, it just dawned on me that if Jesus meant water, that meant that he was not even participating in his own teaching about salvation because he didn't baptize anybody. And they were not baptizing anybody in the Old Testament either. No. So Jesus here is talking about a work of God in the heart, of cleansing and of the miracle. So here's the way we can understand it. Human birth puts us into the human family, right. all right? And what we need is a divine birth that is a miracle of God to make us members of God's family, children, sons, and daughters of God's family. And this is a miracle that must happen. You know, Billy Graham was preaching in Europe and a famous theologian, Billy, was preaching on this text, said, Billy, there's nothing wrong with your message, but I wish you wouldn't emphasize that little word must. And I heard Billy Graham in preaching saying, but I emphasize it because Jesus emphasized it. You must be born again. And Jesus goes on to talk about the fact that that which is born of the flesh is flesh. We're all born of the flesh. We're born into the human family. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So we have to ask those who are listening again, John, we cannot overemphasize this, really. We have to ask them again, are you born again? Right. And don't tell me that it happened when you were eight days old and baptized, right. or when you were baptized as an adult. It is true that in the book of Acts, Baptism was often associated with salvation because it was assumed that if you believe, you'll be baptized. Right. But the thief on the cross proves to us that baptism is not necessary for salvation. It is faith in a Savior who is actually qualified to save us. Wow. Wow. Jesus' explanation of the new birth, being born again, was in respect to a question posed by Nicodemus. In verse 3, he stated, 
that a man cannot see the kingdom of God except he is born again. Jesus in verse 5 explained that a man is born of water and of the spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God in line with what he had said in verse 3. Now the word water here was used by Jesus to symbolically refer to the work of the spirit at new birth. This is very similar to how he spoke in John. Read for us just John 4.14. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into eternal life. A man that drinks of this water shall never thirst. John 7.37, read for us. John 7.37 says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So water, water, symbolically referring to the work of the Holy Spirit at new birth. Alright? Okay. Now, recall also, that Ezekiel in his prophecy employed the use of water to explain the work of the Spirit. Thus, for John 3 5, we can understand the word and as explanatory, where one term describes the other rather than as a conjunction for two distinct things. Hence, John 3 5 can better be understood as saying, except a man be born of water and that is or which is the spirit that and is explanatory so water that is the spirit all right this is seen further in the preceding verses in which the term spirit was emphasized read for us verse 6 john 3 6 says that which is born of the flesh is flesh and yeah. that which is born of the spirit is spirit that which is born of the spirit is spirit because we are born of the spirit born of the incorruptible seed you are begotten of god you are spirit read for us verse 8 john 3 8 the wind bloweth where it listeth and thou hearest the sound thereof for canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Such is everyone that is born of the Spirit. You can't predict his destination and you cannot tell his origin. All you are permitted to hear is a sound. The sound of his new life. The sound of regeneration. Thus we can understand that being born again as used by Jesus in verse 3 refers to being born of the Spirit. This is the new birth. So that this means that as you know as explained here the use of the word and if and is used to explain rather to as a conjunction it means that the use of water baptism is made obsolete because here the water is basically meaning the spirit symbolic not literal water excellent wow um wow what did you not say matthew 28 verse 19 Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. He commanded water baptism. What? 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 In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Put it up for me. Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. There is no such name in the Bible. So that verse already has a problem. There is no such name as Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in the Bible. No such name. That's the only verse of scripture where you have that combination. But in the New Testament, we don't have such name. Philippians chapter 2 verse number nine philippians chapter two wherefore god also hath highly exalted him and given him a name not names a name which is above every name 
so we only have the name of jesus wow wow on the day of pentecost after the holy ghost came down acts chapter 2 acts chapter 2 after the holy ghost has come down verse 37 first now when they heard the gospel they were pricked in their hearts and said unto peter to the rest of the apostles who have now received the holy ghost men and brethren what shall we do then peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gifts of the holy ghost after water baptism you will receive the holy ghost oh hallelujah let me show you another scripture in acts chapter 8 in acts chapter 8 from verse 14 acts chapter 8 now when the apostles which were at jerusalem had that samaria had received the word of god they sent unto them peter and john to come and do something who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the holy ghost watch verse 16 for as yet he was falling holy ghost was not falling upon any of them only they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus they were baptized first before they came to receive the holy ghost go to acts chapter 10 again in the house of cornelius from verse 44 while peter yet spake to the house of cornelius while peter yet spake these words of who jesus was and what he did on the cross of calvary while he was speaking something happened something happened while peter yet spake the holy ghost fell on all them which had the words and listen to this now and they of the circumcision the jews who believed we are surprised because they thought the holy ghost only for the jews as many as came with peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the holy ghost 146 for they had them speak with tongues and magnify god then answered peter after they received the holy ghost can any man damina can damina forbid water that this should be baptized which have received the holy ghost as well as we verse 48 and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the lord <laughs> it's a shame it's a shame what the young man has done is actually jumbling all kinds of scriptures without clearly defining what baptism is the word baptism is the word baptizo it means to be immersed into something and it doesn't have to be water ephesians chapter 4 verse 5 one lord one faith one baptism so which one will you rather have even those that john the baptist baptized they still had to do jesus baptism also and this baptism is not the baptism of the holy ghost what why <laughs> is a shame matthew 3 11. put it up i indeed this is john now john the proponent of water baptism i indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than i whose shoes i'm not worthy to bear he shall baptize you not with water with the holy ghost and with fire so john has already placed a disclaimer on his water i am baptizing with water but the mightier than i will not use water he will baptize with the spirit jesus shows up and the first thing jesus says to them is in acts chapter 1 verse 5 acts chapter 1 verse 5 for john truly baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the holy ghost not many days hence after they receive the holy ghost they must still be baptized <laughs> it's a shame if you want to be 
very finicky to draw the line. Uh, the, the thief on the cross, who was assured eternal life, didn't have the chance to go through baptism, and yet was promised uh, life. And by that time on that cross, John the Baptist has already been baptizing. Why didn't Jesus say, Look, you know you are a thief. <laughs> da, 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 you know you are a thief. Okay, I'm ready to settle the matter, okay? Now you will go down, they will baptize you. Then I will carry you from the river to paradise. All these people who defend baptism don't even understand English doctrine that says that baptism is necessary for salvation, you know, you could start with about a hundred verses in the New Testament that say that believing saves you that don't mention baptism at all. That's a good place to start. You know, John 1.12, John 3.16, John 3.18, John 3.36, none of them mention baptism whatsoever. And yet people teach that baptism is necessary for salvation. Another thing to keep in mind is that 4,000 300 and some years of, of human history before John the Baptist, nobody was baptized. How'd those people get saved? How'd they make it to heaven? If baptism is necessary for salvation. Okay, why was Jesus baptized if baptism is somehow necessary for salvation? Jesus did not need to be saved. Jesus did not need to wash his sins away. He didn't have any sins. So why was he baptized? You have to be baptized as evident that you believe. You shall be saved. You have to baptize. But he that believeth not, I follow the teachings of people like Ever Damina. <laughs> you already damned. <laughs> it's a shame. You are far from faith. You are far from faith. Something has been robbed you. Something has been deprived you. Something has been denied you. And you've been cheated of a reality that belongs to you in Christ. When they take you to the river, is the whole world there? The whole world is not there. So it's insignificant. Does not take from salvation. Does not add to salvation. And many people in churches are not born again. What they understand born again is water baptism. So since they've been baptized, they believe they are born again. That's why we have a lot of, a lot of false brethren. I wonder why Jesus didn't tell the thief on the cross, go down and be baptized before we go to paradise. Go down, go down. You're a thief. Go and be baptized. When they baptize you, come up. Hey, gentlemen, bring him down. He's going to leave her. Peter, Peter, look for Peter. Soak him in the water. Today you'll be with me in paradise. Are we here? Have you ever asked yourself with this question, who baptized John the Baptist? Have you ever asked? Who baptized him? Eh? He baptized himself? Who baptized John the Baptist? I don't want to cause trouble. Let me just <laughs> let me cool down for Jesus. <laughs> Who baptized him? Who? Nobody. It shows you that that baptism he was doing. He himself didn't believe in it. It was a communication. It was a communication. These are natural men. You can't be speaking revelation knowledge to natural men. So use articles to bring a message. Like Jesus teaching ministry. He used parables to bring spiritual realities. I'm not communicating at all. But after resurrection, no more parables. We teach spirituals. We speak words which the Holy Ghost teaches. Comparing spirituals with spirituals. The natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit. Neither can he know them. Why? They are spiritually discerned. But we receive the things of the Spirit because we have the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost teaches us. So we don't need articles and elements. Am I talking to spiritual men? John the Baptist, the baptizer, said, I indeed, I, moi, I baptize you with water unto repentance. 
but the mightier than I is coming the man I cannot lose his shoe when he comes he will baptize you with and and then when he comes I will decrease he will increase that means my ministry will no more be relevant this water baptism will have expired it's english problem go and read in, go and learn english very well then go back and read that verse the baptizer john john that's number one number two he said the one that sent me to baptize the one that sent me to baptize when he sent me he said of that upon who you shall see during baptism upon the, because jesus and john were cousins but john didn't know jesus so in order for john to know jesus water baptism was instituted to identify christ he said the one that sent me said upon whom you shall see the spirit descend on like a dove that is he so water baptism was instituted for john to identify christ because all the prophets had one mission christ and john was the last of them his mission was christ now conclusion the conclusion is ephesians chapter 4 verse 5 ephesians chapter 4 verse 5 one lord one faith one baptism so which one will you rather have the one of water by john or the one of spirit by jesus the choice is yours as i conclude salvation is a product of the finished work of christ entirely based on what christ has done and baptism is spiritual you are baptized by the spirit of god and you're baptized into the body of christ by being born again john 3 is not talking about water baptism john 3 is talking about salvation ephesians 5 where it says washing of water by the word is symbolic 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 the real baptism is being immersed into jesus by the spirit of god which is spiritual papa thank you that's quite analytical and i think that does it